So what is Lotus? So we know what's the Jasmine processing capability now. We know when we sh should consider using Lotus and that we need some uh, prototyping or testing or staging prior to migrating to or migrating or porting our code to Lotus. So Lotus, as the title of the webinar, is a Jasmine batch processing cluster. But what is a cluster? So a cluster is any a group of collection of computers uh, uh, working together to solve a large problem. An example here, if you take five laptops and nowadays each laptop has four cores or processor, connect them together through some uh, fast network, shows the, the image here, and then you are increasing the compute, uh, compute power from four core to um, uh, 20 cores. And, and in this case, you have a cluster of laptops and in the, in the terminology of cluster, a laptop here is not just a laptop because it's, it's part of this cluster and it's considered or called compute node. So it's a multi-processing um, compute node of uh, um, four cores. So this is just a simple illustration. Now we're looking more at the, at the, at the title as Jasmine Batch Processing. So we know now what a cluster is. Now, what is batch processing? So batch processing is any application, whether it's a code, it's a script, an R script, or Python, binary, executable, that is not executed interactively or instantly, meaning at the prompt of your command on, on the Linux terminal, you cannot just put the command and hit enter and it's get, it starts running. No, but it's, it's in, in, the, in the batch computing, you submit your job to the batch system, also known as a scheduler. So this scheduler that will manage the computer resources and will schedule the application for execution based on a set of policies. So what is the difference between interactive, since we're talking about interactive and batch? Interactive, um, so the difference for the batch to interactive is that you don't log into the compute node. The communication between, a, uh, you, between you and Lotus is via a batch system. There is no GUI based environments on the compute node and the resources on the compute, on the compute nodes are tightly controlled and monitored. You have a greater power, you have a high memory, but things are, compute, uh, are all controlled. So that's the difference between interactive. In interactive side, for example, there's no control. Everyone is using at their own, um, and sometimes you can cause side machine um, uh, crashes because someone who is using a lot of, lot of uh, multi-threaded, which it shouldn't be, or using a task that uses a lot of memory that can impact on others. And as you know, the side machine's memory is 32 gigabyte only shared among many users. So that just gives you the, the difference between the two. So now, um, how Lotus uh, fits into Jasmine? So these are the components. As I said earlier, you need some submission node, you need a compute node, storage and LSF. So you're starting from the Jasmine login and the Jasmine um, on your left. So once you log in, you can SSH to the submission nodes. So the submission node is a head node uh, which is Lotus, that you can use to submit jobs to uh, uh, Lotus. And there's the sign machine, Jasmine sign one to five, and the SAMS machine. They are all have um, a capability to, to submit jobs to the compute node Lotus, which is here showing as 4,188 cores. We're expecting more, uh, more to come. Um, just um, uh, have a look to the Jasmine Phase 4 uh, article in the uh, useful link at the end. So now the storage, we we have the CDA archive, the home, the group workspace. These are all visible and accessible from the submission, submission node, as well as from the um, from uh, the compute node. As you can see here, I put a dashed line, uh, so the compute node can access the group workspace and the home area. And there's an arrow that there is a write operation here while you just can read um, the CDA archive. 
And in addition to this three volume as a storage, uh, Lotus has access to two work scratch area. The work scratch here, this one for um, for parallel write operation, and the work scratch no parallel, which is opposite. So if you if if your code doesn't uh, write um, in a parallel mode, then uh, you can use this one. So I'll, I'll go through the work scratch area. So the work scratch area we have now has a size of 70 terabytes. As I said, it's just for concurrent writes. So if you're running a, a parallel job or a, a job array, for example, and the, I'll talk about the job array because that's, uh, um, well, how we, we had some issues about this, is that if you're in, in, in Lotus, you can be writing, if you're using a job array and you don't specify in your job script that the output file for every index element of your jobs has a log file, then LSF job will be writing concurrently to one single file. So in this case, if your log file resides under the work scratch, um, that is fine because that is a, a, is a, a Panasis um, allows it here. But if your log file uh, or, or output log of your jobs uh, reside under work scratch on MPI, that will be a problem. So the work scratch and, uh, MPI is quite large, 250 terabytes. Um, it's been um, um, it uses a, a new flash-based storage, and it has better performance dealing with large uh, um, large uh, number of small files. There are other systems um, which uh, have con they don't allow parallel write operation. So I'll, I'll encourage you to have a look at to the table in this article 176 storage about uh, group workspaces that reside under the Jasmine 4 uh, storage because these, these, uh, these storage won't allow um, a concurrent write. But I won't be covering this today. Um, so this is just now um, a layout on the Lotus hardware. Why do you need to know this? It is, I think it's good to know this, this, the, the, uh, what is available. So it's a, it's a heterogeneous infrastructure. You can't find it on, on a normal sign machine. And you see how it's been uh, it's that scalability. So every time we new uh, CPU model were added with the new uh, uh, memory sizes, which you cannot find this if you are on a single um, a single machine. So that's the beauty of having a cluster. And also um, that will help you to choose the um, um, appropriate resources, especially for those um, running on um, 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 running compiled languages or binaries. It is important to know that if you're compiling uh, a, 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 a binaries on a machine, with a CPU model uh, different from the machine that runs uh, the, the code, there will be some uh, performance uh, issues and there will be also some um, uh, issues with uh, floating uh, point precision. So we advise that you compile and run the code on the same uh, CPU model group. This will be um, 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 covered on the next, uh, on the second, um, uh, webinar on Lotus uh, next year. So just a quick look in here. So the, as you can see the Ivy bridge with 128, we have a lot of host of those, and this is uh, um, quite useful because I think the majority use Ivy bridge, except to others using broad wells. So um, more on the batch system, uh, as I said, it's a mechanism to control access by many users. Many users will be accessing Lotus and the access is controlled through scheduling jobs to uh, a queuing system. And why is this um, um, important to know? Because then LSF 
uh, is so intelligent to uh, check what resources are available and also it will manage your job for you so you don't have to come every time and check it you just submit it and leave it so it's, it's based on a principle of allows you to file and forget many processing tasks and leave LSF to manage the, uh, the allocation and all the up file for you. So why do we need the batch system? We need the batch system first because it's, 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 a, it's a cluster, it's quite large to, to manage uh, individually. So you need a, a, a batch which is actually a software that's been optimized to manage resources um, and also to ensure all users get a fair share of compute resources and make sure that the cluster is utilized efficiently. And, so, and, and for some times we, we, use, we use it for tracking users for accounting and budget control, and also help us for people who are, um, um, you know, for proposals and so, so we, can, we can do some costing of the, of the CPU time and the storage used. So this can be tracked on, um, on uh, by, the, uh, by the batch system. So what are the batch system um, that we have on, on Lotus is LSF. So LSF stands for Load Sharing Facility. It's an IBM product, but there are others like PVS on Archer for those who run models on Archer and there's a SLAR as well. So these are standard uh, um, um, approach to manage a, a, a large a cluster in general. And what all this batch system share, it, the concept of a batch system is based on job queue priority. I'm going to cover the job and queue priority, in, uh, job and the queue, sorry. The priority I won't cover much this time because it's more an advanced topic that will be covered in the next webinar. But I can just mention that briefly here that the priority um, is, is for the user. There are different priorities. There's priority at the queue level, which I can um, show it later on and there's a priority on the on the user which is very it's a dynamic priority so the batch as I said job doesn't run interactively it goes through the LSF batch system for execution and when the condition are right what what I meant by what I mean by condition that the resources are available and free then the job is launched now once you submit the job, it automatically will have some job attribute. The essential job attributes are three in total. The job ID is a positive integer that is automatically assigned by LSF. You don't have to worry about it. That's a number. As soon as you do a uh, submit your job, LSF will print out on the screen or in your or redirecting output that the LSF has assigned this number to your job. Now you can additionally uh, uh, add, um, assign um, a name um, that will be easy um, to manipulate and for reference in your job script or at the submission time. And the third attribute is the owner. So the job, uh, the job is owned only by the login name of the user who created the job. And also the last one is the job state. I'm just going to cover under owner. So in this time, your users are sharing uh, resources. Only that user who owns that job can manipulate the job. So he's only who can delete, resume, or do, do any manipulation or any control. And the, and the other second person who can do this in case when, when a job is causing problem is the, uh, is the uh, batch system administrator. But no other user can, uh, can affect or, or, or modify or manipulate your job. So your, or every single user is working in a shared and safe environment. Now, um, moving to the queues, um, we have now in Lotus, we used to have a long time ago, just one single queue. Now there are five queues and they're grouped on the number of uh, uh, calls they, they use or they are configured for. So there's a serial queue. The serial queue is only single call job. So if you have a task that needs just one call or one CPU, then you can submit it either to the short serial or the long serial, depending on the runtime limits 
that, it, um, that, it, that you need for your processing. So the short celiac queue is the default queue and the maximum runtime is 24 hours while the long serial is not the default queue you have to specify request it in your submission and it has a runtime limit of 168 hours this is seven days on both the short serial and the long serial there is a memory memory control uh, limits enforced and i will cover this uh, later the second uh, type of queues is parallel queues that allows you to run uh, jobs on more than one core or request to run it on more than one core and they all have a runtime limit of 48 hours. So the parsingle has a, allows you to run cores to a maximum number of 16 cores but these cores has to be on a single compute node. While par multi, if you're looking at running your job or parallel job on more than 16 cores, mm -hmm. then you should use the par multi, which allows you to have that number. Let's say if you want to run it all on 24 cores, but gives you access to cores in a distribute distribute across many compute nodes. So you can use the par multi for this. Now, if you're having a, a, a task that needs high memory, um, say 200 or more than that so then you need to use the, the high memory queue again the high memory queue allows you just to use run task using one single core so uh, some lsf command um some are, are useful uh, here on the table i put them uh, I classify them as the submission, status command, and control command. So the, the submission command is the BSOP, that's where um, you start communicating with the batch. And then once you submit your job, you can use uh, the command status, which is the B jobs, B his, B queues. And then you can do some job, some uh, manipulation of your job uh, once it's in the LSF batch system using bmode, uh, bstop, bresume or bkill. I'll cover uh, some of it. And I will also mention that um, all these commands um, are, um, if you want to read more about them and your options, they are all available on the uh, manual page. So if you do on, on the side machine, if you just do man bsop, it will give you um, all the, the syntax, all the option, all the description. Um, on table two, I put the uh, job states. That's, that's an important attribute to the job. And so the job state varies from the time you submit it to the time it's complete. It goes through from state pen to run to done. It might not be completed successfully. Uh, so we'll have an exit value, which is non-zero. That will be an exit. And you might not want to um, uh, manipulate the job by um, uh, stopping it for some time, resume it, then the state will change uh, to, for example, here, uh, P, uh, suspend, uh, P S U S P, which is pending. So it was suspending while the, the suspended while it was pending. So these are some useful links here, which are part of the article on the, uh, um, the documentation. I've uh, put the link to the phase four uh, um, article, which contain all the uh, um, um, latest um, um, migration to JASMI4, considering the storage, as well as the Lotus Core. So please watch out for detail on this.